This week we're joined by Ville from Three Point Stance Podcast. Hey everybody! Make sure you guys are hitting the like button and subscribing to Bearski Film. I oh, appreciate you guys. Thank you for letting me. Uh, thank you for having me. We're just going to cut straight to the uh, breaking news of the day. Today's Halloween. It's the trade deadline, and the Bears made a little splash. They traded a second round pick for Montez Sweat from the Washington Commanders, and uh, yeah, I just want to get your guys' initial thoughts about it. Uh, me personally. I was excited. I don't know if you guys seen my tweet a couple days ago. Maybe I think it was last week. Uh, I basically was saying that I need a splash trade to get the nasty taste of last year's Claypool trade out of my out of my system. But as of today, as for today's trade, the Montez sweat trade, that's exactly what I needed. I needed something major. We need that pass rush. We need that stud guy to get it done. I think this is the perfect guy, even though he's at 27. It just kind of reminds you of the age of Khalil Mack during that trade. We wasn't necessarily knocking down barriers last at, at that time. I think we had just came off of, what, a 6-10 and 10 season in 2017 before he was traded for. You know, we're not too much, may not end too much better than that this year. So I love it. I love the addition. We have enough draft capital uh, next year to really start building and putting some solid pieces around plus free agency. Let's get a head start. I don't, I don't care about all that other stuff that they're talking about, how much, how much compensation, et cetera, et cetera. Let's get something started and in the ground right now. Okay. Um, so funny that you mentioned Claypool because, you know, really I saw a lot of similarities in this trade as I did with the Claypool trade. And uh, for the same reasons, I don't like the trade. So when you just kind of line them up side by side, it's it's a bad year in which your second round pick is a very high value draft pick. You're giving that away for a guy who, in my opinion, um, is again what Ryan Poles has been kind of in love with. It's a guy with immense physical talent. He's like an Adonis, right, at his position. He loves the size, the speed, the profile on paper. And um, I don't think Montez Sweat is a bad player by any means, and I think he's going to have a really good like last few games here. Um, does that mean he's going to be resigning here? I don't know. Um, I think what Ryan Poles did is really put himself behind the eight ball because Montez Sweat doesn't deserve top tier dollar, in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, it's the NFL. Who cares? Who what anybody gets paid? It's not my money. By trading for Montez Sweat, you put yourself in like a better position for the last eight games. I don't think you're increasing the chance that that second round pick gets any worse with Montez Sweat. And uh, when Ryan Poles kind of preaches what his mentality is in team building, he preaches like value, value, value. And I don't see the value in trading for a 27-year-old guy in a contract situation because he can easily just opt out after eight or nine games and start a bidding war for his services. And really, the, the people who are in the worst position to need to overpay for that contract are the people who just spent a second-round pick to get him. So you put yourself in a bad position during the re-signing period. You put yourself in a bad position giving up high draft capital. And by the time this team is good, if they are good anytime soon, a guy like Montez Sweat is hitting 30, 31 years old. So this is a guy that needs to be immediately impactful and make like a huge difference on your team, like you said, like with the Khalil Mack move. But I don't see a guy like that in Montez Sweat. I see a super solid player. I When I think of what happened today with Washington, Chase Young should have came here on a third or fourth round pick, and Montez Sweat should have gone to San Francisco for a second or third round pick. I think Montez Sweat is twice the player Chase Young is. Um, I think when you compare them side by side statistically, uh, they're only one year apart, and Montez Sweat has put up a lot, lot better numbers than Chase Young and um, has been a lot more healthy than Chase Young has. On top of it, uh, recently Chase Young kind of went a little ballistic and, you know, dropped a bunch of F-bombs talking about how, how much he hates losing with Washington. Yeah, you want to bring him here? <laughs> he's losing over there. Well, you think he's going to like it any better losing over here? You know, character might be a little bit more of a concern with him. And I think uh, – I think that's why he did go for you know a later round pick. We definitely upgraded today at that position. This team has a lot of holes, and I think it's a solid player that you're getting. I think you have to sign him. I think that's got to be part of it. If you wind up not signing him, then that that looks like a 
very bad move. But I, I think they're going to sign him, and I think they're going to sign him pretty quickly. I think you're going to see here um, fairly shortly that they're going to get some kind of deal done with him and, and keep him here. And you know what? We need we need solid players in multiple positions. The value of that position for a defense is very large. If he can come here and keep doing what he was doing in Washington, um, that's going to help this defense out a lot. And I don't mind the second-round pick so much as long as you're – capable of acquiring picks the way you have been um it's different when you're sitting there spending picks on players like we did in the past like we spent what two first round picks on khalil mack and then we traded up and gave away a draft capital for trubisky we traded up for anthony miller and gave away draft capital you can't do that you can't just compound that type of uh management and and expect good results if even one of those players doesn't work out you know you're already giving up so much for them so i think this is kind of the opposite you see us gaining draft capital and if we're gaining draft capital with certain trades and things like that then i will allow ryan poles to have the wiggle room to sit there and play with some picks and he's got the wiggle room to get them wrong too so um you know, it's definitely going to have to play out. We're definitely going to have to see how this goes. However, day one, I think it's a fairly solid move by the Bears, although it kind of has mimicked the Chase Claypool trade in some ways. I, I think it's night and day difference. I think the Steelers were so ready to move on from Chase Claypool. Meanwhile, uh, Washington just can't afford their entire D-line. They just can't. But it's not like he's not producing for them. He is. I don't disagree with anything you're saying, like, in theory, just because – it is a decent value, but like the sim- the similarities of the Chase Claypool move and the the thing I keep talking about is the whole value thing. You know, it's a defense that's we have this point a lot. It's defense that it's a defensive coach that can't coach defense and, uh, and a former offensive lineman, a GM that can't draft linemen. And so you have this defensive coach who keeps talking about denting the pocket and getting a good three tech and getting pressure up the middle. And you get a guy who statistically almost looks the same as like Yannick Ngakwe. So he's never had over 10 sacks. He's always like producing really, really solid year after year, but he's not like a flashy, like superstar. Whereas like you get a guy value wise, Leonard Williams just goes from New York for a second and a five. You with a Chicago pick could probably get that with a second and a six or something like that, just depending on the value position. Now you have a three tech or a defensive tackle for the next like five years because it's a much younger guy. The value there, I would be much less upset with a draft or with a trade like that. And I'm not upset necessarily with the Montez Sweat thing, but I think you'd find less issues with it when you get Leonard Williams, who's like the next five year starter at defensive tackle for a team that is desperate for a defensive tackle in their scheme. Instead, you get Montez Sweat, who same thing. It's just like a consistency issue playing next to superstars. And you know, like next to those guys, if you're the third or fourth guy getting the pressure on that play, you should be over 10 sacks once in a while and you just can't get there. Doesn't mean necessarily like my same argument with Jalen Johnson. Some guys just don't get picks. Some guys just don't get sacks, right? And that's okay. But the similarities here of the logic behind, hey, well, we were going to use this second round pick on a pass rusher in this draft anyway. So how about we get a guy who's proven and, you know, hungry and a guy like Montez Sweat because that's second round pick. The same exact logic was applied to the Chase Claypool trade. And look at some of the second round guys or late first round guys that went in this draft that you could have had over right? Like even Rashi Rice producing in the fourth or fifth round, like that logic can be flawed. Like I would rather have a young guy with potential than a guy who I know is at 27, probably at his peak. And now you are hoping for him to do as good, if not better with worse talent around him than he was already underperforming around superior talent. David, you're right. However, you know, I, done the research on this most good defensive linemen in this league were drafted between rounds one and three wide receivers in this league you can find all over the draft Tyreek Hill is a fifth rounder I mean you could go throughout history Antonio Brown was a fifth rounder you could Cooper Cup third rounder you could find those guys later on in drafts but defensive linemen not so much they tend to be drafted pretty high we did this research on defensive tackles specifically there's almost none out of the first round that are good and so that's why for me guys like Leonard Williams is a much better value pick for if if Ryan Poles was really wanting to make a splash, and I wanted a splash, Leonard Williams would have made me ecstatic. I think it's a little different from the Claypool situation, whereas Claypool had another year to make a decision, so you wanted to see for a year and a half to see, and then you can kind of let him walk. Yes, it was at hindsight 2020, it's at a horrible value in the end, but this one is one of those, we know he can walk in eight games, 
right? Or eight or nine games and then hit free agency. So I feel like the trigger was pulled with absolute knowledge that there's going to be something done or there's something already cooking or has been cooked because there's been talk about this possible trade in, for the last two weeks. I, I do agree. I did notice, you know, he does have the similarities to Yannick where it's not above 10 sacks, but just almost there, almost there, you know, every year. But also to speak to that, to kind of devil's advocate, the well, he's playing with these guys. What is it? Have more sacks. Well, he's playing with those guys and those guys get to the quarterback too. So sometimes you, you, you can't get there. There's a lot of people that like Yannick who will join a team and get 10 sacks, 11 sacks or something like that. And that's because there's nobody there. So he gets the extra. And now we're seeing him without help not get to the quarterback. But Montez Sweat is an excellent elite run defender, tracking tracking the run, tracking um, a quarterback options and, and bootlegs and things of that nature. We've seen him sack Justin Fields, you know, catch him, uh, you know, uh, on the run, things of that nature. So I believe he adds a quality that even Yannick doesn't have. So, yes, he has the sack capabilities. Yes, he has the pass rush moves. Yes, he has a, the bull rush type of moves. But he also plays very well, extremely well in the run game. Um, as for the Chase Young trade, there's 32 teams in the league. And the one team that has an elite defense and elite defensive line was the last person to call and wave a late round, a late third round pick. And I, I need everyone to think about it. Take, take some time to think about that. Everyone, 99% of teams need pass rush right now. Whether they're elite teams that are, are making their playoff push, they all need a guy like a 24-year-old Chase Young. However, None of those teams that probably had better picks or earlier in the third round picks didn't offer an earlier in the third round pick for Chase Young. So there has to be something with the medicals. There has to be something with the attitude, uh, which was mentioned a little earlier, where he's like, oh, I hate losing. I hate losing. And the people are looking at that. They're looking at the medicals. They're looking at the injury history. They're looking at the fact that he missed 23 plus games in his career. Um uh, and the possibility that his career might be shorter than people really think. Everyone else is thinking, 24-year-old guy. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of people get hurt uh, playing in our own field with, with that bad grass. So Lamar Houston cheering. Ah. Right, just cheering, <laughs> right. That, that, was, that was a doofus, but anyway, <laughs> I agree, Lamar Houston. But Chase Young, there, there's a reason why people weren't picking up, and it's not, not – based off his talent or his potential, it's the fact people are very scared to give, because they were looking, there was a rumor that they were looking for a first round or a second round pick for a chase. So the Bears went and chose Mont Montez, who's played three out of four of his seasons. This is his fifth season. Three out of four seasons, he's played every game. This season, he's played eight out of eight games. So there's longevity. He's got uh, high well, pretty decent or consistent sack production. Obviously, since Chase Young was drafted a year later and missed about a year or more over that year because he was injured mid-year and then going into didn't get healthy enough to play until the next year, late in the year. But, you know, there's more tackle for loss production rate. There's uh, more sack production, obviously. There's more... Uh, he forces more fumbles. He's got nine forced fumbles in his career. There's none for Chase, so he doesn't even take the ball away. So there are so many things, so many intricate things that people are missing in this trade. What about Jalen Johnson? He stood pat. What's his value moving forward to the team? I like Jalen. I, I honestly do. Um, I know everybody's big on the takeaways, and obviously that's major, especially in the Everflux defense, and I know everybody's likely – almost halfway out the door, if not out the door, and driving away from the idea of Everflux still being uh, the the coach. But uh, this move kind of signifies that, or signals that he's at least getting one more year. Like, they're making this move for his defense, basically. So, and Poles likely gets one more year because he's making moves. So, Jalen Johnson staying, uh, depending on, you know, how deep or how deep this trade request was 
it, it, I, I feel like it may have been strategy. Like he, he, he got the two interceptions. He ran up to the camera and started doing this. How often have you seen him do that? Like how often have you seen him get an interception? He's had well, that's games. the thing. He doesn't get interceptions. He doesn't right. get the opportunity, so, right? So he's had forty three games, forty three games without with just one interception. And then the last game, which was his forty fourth game, he gets two interceptions. And now he's so he granted he's an excellent cover cornerback, but I'm not resetting the market on him either. I I I, I keep him. I keep trying to negotiate. He says. There's a report out that he doesn't want to negotiate until the end of the season. That if that's the case, then you can either let him walk, try to try to tag him or do anything like that. But he also doesn't have the leverage. And the Bears didn't field any calls that made them feel like, oh, that's a great value in a pick, which teams probably weren't trying to give that, knowing he would be a free agent. But also he probably he likely heard, as well as the Bears heard what his true value is, right? They probably heard different numbers from other teams. Well, I would pay him this. I would pay him that. I would pay him that. So now the, they have those teams talking to the agent as well as talking to the team to let them know how the league values him. So now they have the rest of the year to see if they can convince him to stay. Like for me, I mean, a lot of the points that Bill made about like Jalen Johnson, it's kind of the similar situation that you just dealt with with Montez Sweat, right? Where so my question with – uh with like Montez Sweat that will never be answered is like, what were other teams willing to pay for Montez Sweat, right? Because that's what a good organization does. They kind of like weigh those, that value out and see what's going to happen. So if the, if the bears were out there bidding against themselves for Montez Sweat, which I'm starting to think they might have been because really the only time that we've seen the bears execute like a really, really good, clever trade. Well, I guess that's not true because apparently you know, Packers were offering second and first round picks for Chase Claypool last year. And maybe that was true. Maybe it wasn't. And then, you know, we'll see what shakes out of the Montez sweat tree, seeing what people were willing to give up for Montez sweat down the line. But when you see Jalen Johnson <clears throat> and teams aren't valuing, valuing him to what the bears see as fair, you need to know what the bears see as fair for that to be relevant. So when you draft Jalen Johnson, I believe in the third round, second round, was it second or third? Second round pick 50. So second round pick, their value in their mind, I would assume, is probably like no less than a third, right? But if you're assuming that they think that he's on the uptick, they're just not willing to pay him, then maybe they're going to, you know, think a second round pick is the only thing that's fair. So we don't know what any of this is in terms of that value. The problem with that and how this applies to Montez Sweat is, Bill, you mentioned like Montez Sweat doesn't have any of the leverage and neither does Jalen Johnson. Well, if you got two guys on the end of their contract, one of them has the leverage because not both of them can get franchise tag. So you can only do one franchise tag and then you have to lock down the other guy or you're losing one of those guys. So you can pay one of them and then you can franchise the other. But if these guys know what they're doing and they're, you know, competing for top dollar, one of them is getting paid an absurd amount of money. 